Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new to this channel, my name is Tabby and it's nice to have you here. Also, I normally don't sound like this. My allergies are acting up a bit, so please excuse my voice. Today's video is a little different than the ones I normally make. Well, a lot different. It's a trend of mine to make school projects into videos because I think the content could be interesting. This project was so interesting that I decided to film it. This project uses a lot of skills that I typically don't show in my other videos, such as sculpting, BS sewing, and crafting. This project is kind of leading up to a bigger video in the works, so I hope this makes you excited. What is a school project exactly? In my forensics class, we were assigned to create a story involving some sort of crime. From that story, we were to create the 3D crime scene, including three types of evidence. I'll tell you about my story later, but my crime is a drowning. I decided that I wanted to sculpt some of the furniture in my bathroom scene, seeing as though I had no bathroom furniture and I had 9 pounds of air dry clay sitting around for my failed project. This clay is very different than the clay that I normally use. It dries quickly and when it dries, it shrinks, so I couldn't build a base out of tin foil. The smaller pieces like the faucet handles on the sink dried almost instantly when I rolled them out. They ended up being super brittle and I broke them off 4 times. The toilet looks kind of stupid looking, but you get the idea. For whatever reason, it kind of reminds me of Toby the Tuba. Do people even know who that is? I don't know. It was on VHS. <laughs> I also sculpted a bath faucet and handles for the bathtub. Also, people pointed out that bruise thing on my thumb, and it's a blood blister. I got it after picking up a bass drum, and the claws came off and hit me in the thumb. I think it'll always be there, which is kind of gross, but oh well, it's a conversation starter, I guess. As my clay pieces were drying, I moved on to painting the box. My mom recently bought a buttload of Bath & Body Works, so I stole the box from her. The boxes are super pretty and decorated, so it saved me an extra step. I used one of the cardboard bots as the side of my bathtub. I marked off where I wanted the tub to start, and marked off the not tub areas with cut up Walmart bags. Then I spray painted the tub, and the cardboard slit white. I then painted and blushed my furniture. I used two coats of Mr. Super Clear to not only seal in my blushing, but to make the blue paint matte. While letting the furniture dry, I unmasked my box, laid down the floor pattern, and glued the bathtub wall. I then began making a plethora of carpets and bath mats, the first not featured being glued with Gorilla Glue. Having done so, I covered my thumb, along with my first and second finger, with Super Glue. I couldn't fill them for two days. I got smart and used hot glue for the other carpets. By this time, my bathtub faucet and handles had dried, and I painted them a classic gray. I then glued them into my box. I painted a window in the bathroom and made curtains for it. I made three crime scene markers along with a piece of notebook paper from a leftover flooring. I did all of this off camera, sadly. Finally, I assembled all of my pieces together. Now I would like to redo the story behind my crime scene. I hope you enjoy. The story is called girls just want to have fun. The worst crimes always seem to occur at night as I lay in bed restless and exhausted. The phone rang at exactly 1.13 a.m. Chief Commissioner Xander was on the other end. Sorry to call you so early, detective, but we just got a case. It's a suicide claim. I rubbed my face and sit up grunting. You know what they say, Xander. Crime doesn't sleep. Send me the directions and I'll be there soon. By the time I was dressed and ready to leave, Xander had sent the directions to my phone. I looked at the directions as I would make my way to the car. It was to a university about 15 minutes from my home. Though I didn't expect many people to be out on the road at this hour, I flipped on the lights anyways and pulled out. 
I arrive at the Alpha Sigma Alpha sorority house at 1.30. Several police cars were already there and college girls were scattered around the area. I walk through the crime scene tape and run into Commissioner Xander. Hey Liam. Jesus, you look rough. He grunts just slightly at my appearance. Yeah, well, I didn't exactly get a lot of sleep last night, I retort. Where's the body? Xander leads me through the sorority house towards the body. We pass multiple girls. Most hug themselves and stare at the floor. Some are pacing, some are crying, and some are wet. I know at least six girls wrapped in towels. It's September and one o'clock in the morning. No sane person would go out for a swim at this time and season, I think to myself as I pass by. Xander finally stops at a bathroom. The bathroom was nicely decorated and the yellow evidence markers did not go with the color scheme. I step in and look at the markers. The first was a suicide note. It was written in a blue ballpoint pen and positioned to the left of the bathtub at a slant. There were only a few lines in the letter and it was not signed. The handwriting was messy, as though it were written in a hurry. Then again, the girl could just have terrible handwriting. Sitting across the paper was the ballpoint pen without a cap. The end was chewed. Finally was the girl in the tub. The water had not been drained. She was face up in the water, looking into the land of the dead. She was pretty and innocent looking. Rigor mortis had not yet set in, but her hands, feet, and lips were a light blue. Her clothing was nothing special, but the words on it were intriguing. The girl's shirt said, Alpha Sigma Alpha Pledge. I straighten and look at Commissioner Xander. Will you get the paramedic that responded to the scene? I ask. Xander turns to leave. While I wait, I write down my observations. Xander and the paramedic return shortly. I shake their hand. Detective Liam Gale, I say, pleased to meet you. I just wish it were under better circumstances. Dave Johnson, he responds, and I couldn't agree more. I was the one to respond to the call first. The girls brought me in here and begged me to help her, he gestures to the girl in the tub. Do you know her name? I ask. Adeline Miller, he says. She's a freshman in college. Anyways, I get in here and Adeline is laying on her side, facing the shower wall. The shower was still spewing water. I scolded that. The bathtub was also stopped up. Her nose and mouth were almost submerged in the water and she wasn't breathing. I checked her pulse and she was definitely dead. Her nails were already turning colors and I knew there wouldn't be any hope for resuscitation. Her friends were very distraught by this. I nod. Do you think this was a suicide? I ask, intrigued. Honestly, I don't. Her position is odd and so are the circumstances. I agree with you. At this time, our medical examiner, Dr. Sanchez, enters the bathroom. Good morning, Detective Gale, she says and moves towards the body. I apologize for my lateness. I watch as she examines Adeline Miller. She's a fresh one, isn't she? Sanchez notes as she looks over the girl. She moves Adeline's head to the left, revealing a bruise close to her temple. I know what you're thinking, Liam, and no, the bruise is not from a fatal impact. However, I would say a blow like this could knock someone unconscious. She turns around to look at me. We have moments like these where we share the same idea. I nod and leave the room. It didn't take long to find the head of the Alpha Sigma Alphas. She looks like a classic sorority girl, blonde highlights, fashionable clothes, and too much makeup that ran in colorful streaks down her face. I escort her to a private room while introducing myself. She takes my hand, doing the same. Savannah White, she says. She doesn't hold my gaze long and barely touches my hand. Her arms wrap around her protectively and her head droops to the floor. We enter the room and I sit across from her. I ask for the story. She begins the events while hardly looking at me. She pops her fingers repeatedly under the table. According to Savannah, they were enjoying some light drinking when Adeline said she was going to take a shower. Savannah said Adeline was gone for a very long time and she went to check on her. When Savannah knocked on the door, there were no answer and she got worried. She unlocked the door and discovered the suicide note. Then Adeline. Savannah immediately called 911, and now here we are. How much alcohol did Adeline have? I asked, writing down what she told me. Just a few beers, she responds, glancing at me. I nod. Do you have any idea as to why Adeline would commit suicide? No, she wrings her hands. But she came from a very strict family. I've heard her fighting with her parents before. She would always come out of her room crying or lock herself inside her room. That could have something to do with it. Hmm. I make a bold move. So why are some of the other girls wet? Her eyes slowly meet mine. They're coincidentally all freshmen who have pledge shirts on, the same shirt that Adeline had on. Her eyes dart from me to the table, to her hands, to the door. Me. Table. Hands. Door. 
She finally looks at me as tears stream down her face. It was an accident, she sobs. I nod and stand. My team collects handwriting samples from both Savannah and Adeline, as well as the other sorority girls. The suicide note and pen were placed in separate bags and sent in for fingerprinting and analysis. While searching Savannah's room for handwritten notes, I stumble upon several ballpoint pens, all with their ends chewed. I bagged them as well. I collected several beer cans and pens from Adeline's room. I make sure that Dr. Sanchez documents Adeline's BAC. I personally place handcuffs around Savannah's wrist. After careful analysis, the suicide note was confirmed as being written by Savannah White. The note had multiple fingerprints on it from Savannah and the other sorority girls. The chewed pin not only contained samples of Savannah's DNA, but her fingerprints as well. Large amounts of water were found in Adeline's lungs, making the cause of death to be drowning. Adeline's BAC was 0.12, causing her to be disoriented and decreasing her sense of judgment. Savannah later admitted to writing the fake suicide note and eventually told the night of Adeline's death. Adeline was a pledge for the Alpha Sigma Alpha sorority and was desperate for freedom and a sense of belonging. To become a sorority sister, the pledges were put through multiple hazing activities. Each girl had to drink four beers in under four minutes to advance to the next round. The next test was to withstand a freezing shower for five minutes. The sorority girls stopped up the bathtub and locked the pledges in the bathroom. While Adeline was starting her shower test, another pledge had finished her test. The girls went to congratulate the pledge and left Adeline's door. While they were gone, Adeline slipped and hit her head against the bathtub, knocking her unconscious. Her body continued to breathe the water in the bathtub and drowned. When the girls returned, they found Adeline dead. Panicked, Savannah wrote a fake suicide note and called the police. She told every member and pledge to go along with the story and pray for the best. Savannah and several other sorority members were charged with involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to several years in prison. A candlelight vigil was held for Adeline Miller. The university also suspended the Alpha Sigma Alpha House. After the case, I was finally able to get a good night's sleep. I really hope you guys enjoyed that narration and story time. I hope it kind of puts you at ease despite it being kind of gruesome and brutal. I'll let the video finish playing out and make sure you stay tuned for the end. For the end. I don't know. <laughs> for some bloopers. It'll be fun. Stay tuned. Yeah. Have a nice day. Bye. I love you. Hmm. That might look like something else. No!